Crest Church. How is everybody doing this morning? Let's try again. How is everybody doing this morning? Woo! There we go. Don't let the weather make you feel, you know, down and out. We're going to worship God. Please uh, join us and stand if you're able. Let's sing with the Spirit today. The Spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. Let's give it up for our just kids. Woo! God is good. God is good. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move. Rest on us, come rest on us. As the spirit was moving over the water, spirit come move over us. Come rest on us, come rest on us. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates of heaven on end. Come rest on.
Amen. So I'm next. My name's Joel Country. So glad you could be with us here today. I am here to present our announcements for today. Unlike weeks past, however, I am not able to share the announcements on the screen. So you will have to follow along with me on the handout. And if you don't hand a handout, have a handout, please raise your hand. We'll have one brought to you so you can follow along. Here we go. We need one up here, please, Don. And someone up here as well. So first and foremost, Just Students. That's a brand new youth ministry that's started by uh, uh, Jen. And she will be hosting that on Thursday evening. Every Thursday evening if we have a youth, as uh, Joe Pesci would say. Uh, please bring them along on Thursday evening to the community center at 6 o'clock. Just Kids are looking for teachers and helpers. So if you have a affinity for young people, please see Alexis, and uh, she would love to have your assistance with that as well. Alexis is right over there with her hand up right now. Uh, Celebrate Recovery happens every Tuesday evening at the Ray of Light Cafe. Best place to be on a Tuesday evening. So please make your way over there if you want to participate in that event. Men's Breakfast. Yes, men enjoy food quite a bit. And next Saturday at 9 a.m., we will have yet another Men's Breakfast. It's a great opportunity for the brotherhood of men to actually not just enjoy a meal together, but get to know each other a little bit more deeply and in the spirit as well. Women's Breakfast, not to be outdone, is two weeks later on November 18th at 9 a.m., in this particular case, that will be also at the Newton Community Hall, which is just down the hall here where you had breakfast this morning. Coming up on November 11th, anybody know what November 11th means? Veterans Day, exactly. We will have a special Veterans Day breakfast at our community hall at 9.30 a.m. on that very day in celebration of our veterans. And we'll be honoring and celebrating our veterans at the service on November 12th, the following day, right here. Um, at this regular channel. Uh, so if you do have a veteran in your family history, or if you yourself are a veteran, uh, please uh, contact us and send information to um, on the flyer here. You'll see the instructions. We'd like to have a video celebrating our veterans at the time. All right, if you can already believe it, Thanksgiving is right around the corner, and we have our annual Thanksgiving breakfast coming up, or Thanksgiving dinner, I should say, from 12 to 3 p.m., so you're welcome to join us for turkey and all the fix fixings, and I'd like to say there's an exclamation mark after this one, and of course, dessert. So, if you are hungry, and I know I always am, please show up for the Thanksgiving dinner. Please uh, um, sign up and give us your RSVP, if you wouldn't mind. All right, and today... Given that the month of October is also uh, a very important month for churchgoers, and especially here at our church, it is Pastor Appreciation Month. And today, on behalf of everybody in this church who's a regular member and a visitor, it is my distinct pleasure to stand up here and to deliver a little token of our appreciation, um, a card and a gift card to our pastors, John and Rachel. John, Rachel. <laughs> something here for Pastor McKenish, but he couldn't be here today, but it is here on his behalf, and I'll leave it with you folks to deliver to him. So with that, a quick prayer. Thank you, God, for all you do and for bringing us together in this incredible community. We love you, God, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, thank you, God, for your miraculous love, a love that defies all things in this world. You come to us, and you open our hearts, and you give us more than we can imagine. Please rise with me as we sing this song, Reckless Love. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. And you have been so, so good. Before I 
circle there, you breathe your life in me. And you have been so, so kind to me. your foe, still your love fought for me, and you have been so, so good to me, when I felt no worth, you paid it all for me, and you have been so, so Shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, come and ask for me. There's no wall you won't creep down, lie you won't tear down, come and ask for me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up. shadow, no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me, there's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me, there's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your reckless love. Amen. Amen. No matter what you're going through today, just remember that God is standing with you in those challenges. Just like it tells in the Bible, even in the fire, God is standing right next to you, just protecting you and guiding you through.
between those moments. The messy parts always get turned into a message when we stand with God. another in the fire standing next to me there was another in the water holding back the tears and should I ever need reminding of how I've been set free there is a cross that bears the burden where another died for me there was another Should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning? Either way, I won't bow to the things of this world. Cause I know, and I know I will never be alone. There is another in the fire, standing next to me. There is another in the water, holding should I ever need reminding what power set me free? There is a grave that holds no body. Now that power lives in me. There is another in the fire. I can see the light in the darkness as the darkness bows to him. I can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between wears him. I can feel the ground shake beneath us as the prison walls cave in. Nothing stands between us. Nothing stands between us. the name that is Jesus. Woo! He who was and still lives and will be through it all. So come what may in the space between all the things I've seen and this reckoning. I know I will never be alone. Cause I love
count the joy come every battle cause I know that's where you'll be I count the joy come every battle cause I know that's where you'll be I count the joy come every battle cause I know that's where you'll be with them in the fire and he goes and he's there with us when we are in the fire amen all right let's pray and then let's get into connection time heavenly father we just thank you thank you that you are always there whether it's in the fire with us or you're holding back the seas like you did for the israelites so they could go from egypt to israel lord we just uh, we praise you and we thank you for those times that you hold back the things that could destroy us and that you are there with us to make things right and set us on the right path. We praise you and thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So I get to do the connection time. These are the cards that are in the seat backs in front of you. If you would take them out and just fill them out. And if you've already given us your information, you just need to put the date and the name on there. Uh, if you need to update your info, you can do that. Also, we have on the back side of this places you can check to make a new uh, next step. Or if you want to learn more about a life group or a different ministry, you can check that. And then the most important part is the prayer part. Uh, th this is a place that you can put um, prayers, um, victories. You can also put questions if you want. This is also where if you're interested in the Thanksgiving dinner, you can write that on there. If you're a veteran or you have a veteran in your family and you want to include a picture in the video, you write that on the back and we'll be in contact about that. It's just a great way for us to stay in connection. Uh, beyond that, that's it. I'm going to invite Pastor Rachel to come on up and introduce uh, Jeff and Victor, who are going to be sharing their testimony. And as she's doing that, let's just pray out of this time and into uh, the testimony time. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all those that have come to give their testimonies, testimonies and how you are working out others' testimonies for the future when we'll be able to share those together. Lord, we thank you for what the work you do in our lives and how you make it our testimony into an evangelistic tool for your kingdom and for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. So great to see you all here. I know it's a little bit of a gray day, especially after the beautiful day yesterday, but uh, it's wonderful. Any day is a good day to be in the house of the Lord. So so happy to be here with you all. So we have this week um, the last of our testimonies, aside from John and I, who are going to uh, close it out next week, which is part two of ours. Um, but today we're going to hear from uh, Victor and Jessica. And uh, <laughs> woohoo! <laughs> If you've, uh, if you've been here uh, at all with us before, you've probably seen Victor. He's pretty visible there. You might not have seen Jess. She likes to hide in the background a little bit. But, uh, but um, so I, I'm super excited that they're here today. Um, Vic and Jess are two people who are very, very uh, near and dear to us. And you start getting emotional. I know. Jeez. Um, uh, they've been with us for a really, really long time. They followed us. Um, pretty much everywhere we've uh, been, and we've been a lot of places. Um, it, Victor and I have been playing together for, I don't even know, yeah, over 10 years now. It's been a long, long time. Um, so uh, they're like they're like our family. They, they are our family. And so I am so excited today to um, allow you to share in a little bit of their story um, that we've been allowed to be a part of as well. So... Without further ado, I'm going to ask you guys to come up, and we're going to hear testimonies today from Jess and Vic. Hello? Hello? How you doing, everybody? Yeah. All right. 
give us a second to get ourselves set up here. We're live. <laughs> I know, I know, it's a little weird. Just, just want to let everybody know it's okay. Don't have my guitar on me. That's fine. <laughs> it's a little weird for me too. Weird for him too. All right. I'm Jessica. And I'm Victor. And this, and this is, is our, our story. story. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell we rehearsed this one, right? Eh? So far, so good. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to start with my life verse, it's, uh, which is on Isaiah 64, verse 4, which says, since, an, since ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. Well, my name is Victor. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ who struggles with anger and lust. Um, and for those who don't know, I was born in a suburb of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Um, and I grew up with a, uh, on a family, a love, loving Christian family, and a lot of friends around me who love me. Um, however, um, expressing myself, expressing my feelings um, wasn't a thing when, at our home. Um, so so in, in the large part of my life, and even today, I'm, I'm still learning to, to express myself because um, it just, it's just wasn't a thing back then. Um, but with all, with all that said, I, you know, I don't want to take anything away from how great my parents were. Uh, in fact, you know, if, if, if it wasn't for them, um, it, you know, I don't know where I would be today. Um, but God uh, used them as tools to, to, to teach me, and to, to mold me into to what I am today. And they were my... Um, my main musical influencers as well. Um, and all right. So prior to the age of nine, I was I, it, going to church was just something we did. It, it, you know, I I was I went to church because of my fathers, of my my parents. It, it was just something we did. Um, but um, but by then something something happened. Uh, a Tug of the Holy Spirit uh, came along, and and he prompted me to profess my faith and be baptized, uh, and so I did. Um, and for the first time, I, I experienced faith for myself, faith in God for myself. Um, and so, in when I was thirteen, I joined the teenage choir. Uh, there was lots of choir in my church, and by age group. Um, and by 13, I, I joined, and there was also a very significant time in my life where, where God uh, called me into music. Um, and, and, you know, that also helped me to connect with the church and have a relationship with, with, uh, with the church as a community. And... Um, so fast forward a couple of years, a few years later, <laughs> um, my sister moved to the States and my, with, with a cousin of mine. And then she called me and she kept saying, I, I keep remembering having those conversations with her. And, and she kept saying how great U.S. was. And for those who don't know, down in Brazil, um, U.S. is like, you're the cool kids, you know, like U.S. is, is it, like you see it all on the ads on TV and the movies, and so I remember thinking, wow, this is going to be fantastic, you know, just like I saw on TV, so by my two weeks shy of my 19th birthday, I came to the States, and this was going to be fantastic. <laughs> Um, but it was actually a, a pretty pivotal part of my life, and and um, and I was starting in the wrong direction. And, you know, I didn't struggle making friends or anything. 
Um, um, but it was a struggle for me because I didn't have all those connections I, I used to have, uh, those deep connections I, I used to have uh, down in Brazil. And, and uh, so I started, you know, drifting away from God, going to clubs and, and chasing girls and, and uh, uh, doing that a whole lot. Um, and, uh, but I'm still, I was still remember myself being thankful um, for um, the upbringing I had. That God always, always um, was there, even in the midst of that. Um, God was always there speaking deep down, um, you know, not to go too far away from, from him and, you know, um, and uh, even, even the, the, my buddy that I, we used to go out at clubs all the time, you know, we had the same similar up, upbringing and he, and he would say, you know, we would talk often and say, you know, we're, we're not cut out for this. You know, even in the midst of, you know, the rides to and from the clubs, we're not cut out for this, man. We, you know, we, we're going to come back to the first love, to God's love, you know, eventually. So and he, God made a way, uh, even in the midst of that, to, to get me back into, uh, into his love through a lot of godly, great influences. And then, um, uh, so uh, short, a little, little shortly after that, I, I joined the worship team again because that's what God uh, always used um, to, to get me back. So. All right, my turn. So, hi, I'm Jessica, and I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. I struggle with codependency and disordered eating. I was raised by a strong, dominant mother. Um, some of you know her. Um, and um, when I was four, um, my mother left to go um, into alcohol and drug treatment. And I lived with my grandfather for a while. Um, I quickly began feeling the need at this time to keep everyone happy, ignoring my own wants and needs. This way I could ensure my safety, value, and worth. My mom won't drink and leave me again if I can take care of everything and everyone. A couple years later, my baby brother was born, and at a young age of six, I soon felt the responsibility to take care of him, as my mom was working really hard and going to nursing school. I grew up really fast. I often felt unseen and misunderstood. We were always very busy. My mom always worked really hard. She also liked to play hard. She tried to give us a good life. She was a really good mom, and she did her best. My experience with God in church when I was young, was really only for the holidays. We went to a Greek Orthodox church, and all I remember is itchy tights, stinky incense, and a hand squeeze reminding me to sit still and be quiet or else. When I was 11, my mom did have a relapse, and her and my father decided it was time to get out of the city and move to New Hampshire. That would fix everything. I began a struggle with food and body image issues. Food became a friend I could count on. Feeling isolated and lonely, I began to binge eating and then was bullied for the way I looked. A neighbor at the time, I attended an Assembly of God church and invited me to go with her. At the end of that service, the leaders there brought us into a room and prayed with us and asked if I wanted to be saved. I, of course, said, yes, please, save me, save my mom, save me from my life and myself. I began attending youth group and praying often. However, this didn't last long, as I quickly felt that church being more concerned with controlling and shame, and instead of helping me develop a personal relationship with Jesus. After another relapse, my mom and my dad finally separated for good. And now with my dad gone, I really felt the pressure to be the other adult in the house. My need to be the fixture followed me in all of my relationships, always being the caretaker. In high school, I began to party a lot and had a very abusive relationship. I was headed down a really bad road. But some of my really great friends had an intervention with me, and I began to turn my life around. While in college, I struggled to hear my own voice and what I wanted to do, really separating my own identity from the voices of others in my head. This often left, led me to withdrawing and quitting everything. I began to pray to God to help me. I spent the next year trying to listen 
to my voice and not trying to please others. I found a great job, had my own apartment I love, and I met Victor in 2005. During our first phone call, he was heading home from a church event and going to teach littles at Taekwondo. I was immediately felt safe with him. I was so inspired by his faith, though I would challenge him regularly with difficult questions. And he never wavered, often repeating the same scripture. Know the truth, and the truth shall, shall set you free. <laughs> I think it was comfortable for him to just keep saying that. <laughs> yep. So, so this was a new challenge for me. And, and I never really shared the gospel with anyone except through music. Um, though Jessica didn't know the gospel, she would often inspire me as well with, with the heart of God and not the head knowledge. Something a lifelong Christian like myself need to experience and remind and, and be reminded that God can work to anyone and anything. So as we began planning the wedding, Victor expressed how important for us to get married in a church. So we did begin church shopping. We began going to church regularly on Sundays, but something did begin to change in me. I still hadn't surrendered, but I wanted to support my husband's faith. Yeah, a couple of years into our marriage, into our marriage I, I sent out Jessica for some food, and she came back uh, telling me we we're going to be parents. But I wasn't <laughs> pregnant. <laughs> There's some like Mary or something, but <laughs> a little different. Um, when I was 13, a doctor told me that I had a very difficult time getting pregnant, if at all. This devastated me, as the one thing I always wanted to be was a mom. But, but while I was at the dollar store, I bumped into an aunt who I hadn't seen in a while, and she said, I had been trying to track you down and ask me how I felt about adoption. She said her great nephew needed a forever home. And when I came home, I spoke to Victor, and for the first time, Victor and I prayed for the right answer, and we both confirmed that this was God's will for us. I think we have a picture of our whole family up yep. there. That's there Robert. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Baby Victor. <laughs> yeah, no, no beer Victor that, at that time, yeah. That was, there you go. That was a little more recent. So I, w I was terrified. I was terrified. I really struggled to find my way as a father in our marriage, and, and our marriage began to, to, to struggle as well. I hadn't been to church, and I knew that we needed to get back into it. So one night while I was at Blockbuster, am I aging myself that's, that's, a bit there? That's how old we are. <laughs> I was looking for a movie to watch with Victor, and I saw a movie called Fireproof. It was a movie about a husband and wife who was struggling in their marriage. One of their parents um, had given them a devotional journal called The Love Dare. I have one. Um, and they asked them to do it and it helped restore their marriage. The movie had a huge impact on me and I immediately got a copy of The Love Dare and we began reading it together. Day one begins with love is patient and love is kind, but on day 19, it said love is impossible. This day changed it all for me and I'd like to share some of what I read now. Day 19, love is impossible. Let us love one another for love is from God and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. First John 4, 7. The secret is this, you cannot manufacture unconditional love, agape love, out of your own imperfect heart. It's impossible. It's beyond your natural ability. It's beyond all your capabilities. You may want to believe that you may be convinced that with enough hard work and commitment, you can muster up unstoppable, lifelong, sacrificial love from within. And while, yes, you may be able to demonstrate kindness and patience at times, and while you may have learned to be more thoughtful and considerate than before, the task sincerely and consistently loving someone unselfishly, unconditionally, is another matter altogether. That's why if your relationship with Jesus is not right, you cannot love your spouse because he is the source of love. Love is from God. The scriptures consistently communicate that the way we discover love is by turning to God's son, Jesus Christ, who was sent to the earth to be both the example and the source of perfect love. 
It all made sense. I knew then I needed Jesus. I always have. And after that day, I surrendered my life to Christ. So then we began to go on to Rock Church in Plastow. And I immediately felt a sense of community I was longing for ever since I came to the States. Those deep connections that we uh, were started forming. Um, and we began to go into the Howard's house for, for couples life group. And sorry, I lost myself a little bit. <laughs> and we, we, got, we got super close to John and Rachel. And they have been instrumental in our faith walk. Inspired by their faith and their leadership, we're all in. And, we're, and when they asked us to go to Amesbury to bring life back to a church, we said yes. <laughs> and this wouldn't be the last time we say yes in following John and Rachel on God's call. <laughs> It really has been a blessing to me and my family to serve with John and Rachel. They have been there with us through some of the hardest times and celebrating some of the most beautiful moments in our lives. Our whole church family really has been the greatest gift. Some of the best years um, were serving at Rock Church, Amesbury. We built something special there, a family. I went on my first mission trip in 2015 and was changed forever after. I never really experienced such a closeness with God as I did on that trip. We often refer to it as the thin place. And that's exactly what Honduras was for me, a thin place. God was preparing us for what was to come. The next few years were not easy. I watched my baby brother struggle with addiction. My son had a lot of special needs from early childhood trauma in and out of treatment centers, and Victor lost his mother after a terrible complication following a car accident. This is a very dark time. I felt a different level of, of hopelessness losing someone this close to me. Struggling to talk about my feelings, rage began to surface. And, and it was when our church started a new program called Celebrate Recovery that, that God brought healing to both myself and my marriage. Having a mom who was a force in recovery community, I was familiar with the steps, but I, not having a drinking or drug problem myself, I never felt I needed them. But when my mom cel started Celebrate Recovery, I joined a step study and real healing and freedom began. Celebrate Recovery taught me so much about myself. It taught me to recognize when I was trying to fix something that wasn't mine to fix and how to set healthy boundaries. I began to truly find my identity in Christ and not in what others thought of me. I began taking better care of myself, going to the gym, eating healthy, and spending a lot of intentional time with God. I remember when Jessica first returned from the mission trip and she wanted to become a minimalist. <laughs> And, and build a tiny house. I thought she was crazy. <laughs> but then I went on my first mission trip, um, and my heart began to change as well. So when the church said they were selling the parsonage, and we started talking serious about it and praying about it, God did some, some amazing things during this time, really placing some godly people, answering our prayer, answering prayers in our lives. Um, many of those who helped us to build a tiny house are here today. So we got the slides there. That's my man T, holding the Ryobi tool. Oh, get back to that, that picture with the Ryobi tool right there. The construction guys. Love their Ryobi. made front of us for having <laughs> homeowner tools. <laughs> and Gabe right there. My man Gabe doing the roof. And my brother Ray. My brother from another mother. Ray there. 
so many came together and every time we were on like the next journey of building that tiny house, we would be praying like how we're going to get this done and God would show up and send somebody else. Um, we didn't even know Gabe and Shireen. We had just begun starting this church here oh, in Haverhill and, um, and Gabe was like, have you ever thought of rubber roofing? I'll do your roof. I'm like, what? We were just like freaking out about how we we're going to get a roof on this thing. And they just, just kept showing showed up. showed up. And it just was like. Fred showed up too, right in, the, right in the middle Fred of helped. it. Fred helped. He built our too. stairs. He put cabinets in. I mean, it was, it really is a testimony of true love and community. And that's what this church is. It was is. a God thing. For sure. The blessings didn't stop there. And little did we know that as we were downsizing our home. We're our upsizing our family. <laughs> A couple mil months into building, we found out I was pregnant. God had given me a vision quite a few years earlier before that Victor and I would have a, have a daughter, and her name would be Olivia. And I could not believe this was really happening. But God is true to his promises, just not in our timing. Isaiah 64, 4. Yes. <laughs> she was exactly what my family needed as the next few years we would suffer many losses, including my baby brother just days after she was born. But she has filled our life and our family's life with so much joy that has carried us through such heartache. It has been tough for me as of late, but I know I'm not alone. It is always with me. This church, he's always with me. God's with me. My church family is with me. And you always got my back. So, yeah, this, this was a really dark time for me as well. Um, the same week that Olivia was born, Ray passed. And that was not only, not only for us as a family, the immediate family for our church community, Ray was, was such a blessing. And he was such a light. And um, I, kept, I kept asking, you know, I, Found myself asking, "Why, why God, why, why does this, why does this happen?" You know. And sorry. Um, I remember um, hearing in, the, in this conference way back in the day. Whenever you ask um, yourself why. Um, be intentional and follow up with the question, what for, God? Because that way you prompt, you're prompting yourself to ask, God, what is your purpose for the situation? Because there is a purpose, always. And um, we're, we're just like, just like when, when Jesus died, and he stormed the gates of hell. When there was death, there was life that week. And Olivia was born, and she gave joy to our lives. And, you know, and the grief didn't stop there that year. I also lost my, my dad, which was a great musical influence in my life. I'm, I hear, I'm here playing guitar every week. That was... God using my dad as an influence and a couple of aunts later that year as well. Um, so, but with all of that, God carried us through. And, and today we can, we can raise our Ebenezer and we can say he carried us through. And here we are. And that's our story. Woo! <laughs> uh, we, um... That's just the start. That's right. There's so much more to come. Um, 
you know, every time we have a testimony, I'm like, oh my gosh, that was so good. You know, how can we possibly like have another one that's just as good, you know? And then they're all just so amazing. And that's why we need one another and we need our stories. You know, I, I know I quoted this at the beginning of our series and I'll say it again, you know, um, the enemy is defeated by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Um, our stories are the stories that are going to bring um, Jesus to our world. Um, and as I said, we've had the privilege of um, walking through a lot of that story together, and a lot of it um, was amazing and joyous, and um, a lot of it was really, really hard, you know? But, um, but that's why we're here. That's what our church family is for, so that we can walk through and celebrate together those amazing times, and so that when those hard times come, and Jesus tells us those hard times will come he says, in this life, you will have trouble. It's not in, like in this life, there might be some trouble. You might trip over some things. No, he says, in this life, you will have trouble. But take heart, because I have overcome the world. But we need one another for that. And so it, this is just such a testimony to the bonds and the strength of church family. And so I'm so glad all of you are here today. And I always say it at the end, but I'll say it right now. I love you all so much. And so now I'm going to talk to you about offering. <laughs> I didn't just say that to butter you up, I swear. Uh, <laughs> um, we do take our offering during our worship service, and that's no accident. And that's because here at Just Church, um, we do believe that um, offering is an act of worship. Um, it is our opportunity to give just a little bit back to God um, for all the blessings that he's given to us. Um, and so we here at Just Church, I've told you before, uh, we don't charge a cover charge to come to church. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the God's word says that God loves a cheerful giver. And so if he moves your heart to sow into this ministry, we are so incredibly grateful for that. Um, but what I would say is that if you're not giving out of joy, but if you're giving out of obligation, and just put that wallet away. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for someone to partner with us, to really believe in this mission and to believe that God works through his people. Um, and so, as I said, we are so grateful um, when you do give, um, but, uh, but that's not an obligation. It's a, it's a joy. It's a privilege. It's a blessing. Um, and so Kristen and Dawn are going to come around with our very famous, our very famous, very famous and uh, very fancy JC Buckets here. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to ask the rest of the team come up. We're going to uh, sing our last song. And you can put your um, envelope with your offering in there as well. Um, on your envelope, if you want to get that tax credit, just make sure you write your name and make sure it's legible. Um, and you can put that in there. You can also put your connection card in there. And... Um, we're just, as I said, so grateful uh, when you choose to sow into this ministry. So uh, let's, just, let's just pray for a minute. We don't always do this, but I just feel like the Spirit's moving us. God, we just thank you for the opportunity to give back to your ministry. We thank you for the opportunity to be part of building your kingdom here on earth. And I just pray you would bless us, and, and, and I pray that you would give us wisdom and discernment as to how we um, use your, your funds to reach out to the lost and to um, just bring hope um, to those who may not be feeling that hope right now. And so we just thank you, and we praise you. We lift all of this up in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Let's worship once together, once more together as we close out our service.
that we do not have to be slaves to our fears anymore, that you give us a spirit of boldness, not of timidity, and we just ask for you to let us to use that spirit as we go from this place. Let a, your spirit overflow into our communities. Allow us to just bring this spirit of hope, of love, of peace, of kindness everywhere we go with us. May we just leave a trail of love in your name. We thank you and praise you. We lift all of this up in the name of God, who is our Father in heaven, in the name of God and the person of Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for you and for me, and in the name of God and the person of the Holy Spirit, who lives with and in us at all times. Amen and amen. As always, it is a privilege and an honor to worship with you. Come on back next week. We're going to finish off this series. John and I will give our second part. Oh! <laughs> That was trunk or treat last night. Super, super fun. The Scooby Gang. <laughs> it was such a great time. Love you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. God bless. Cause I'm no longer a slave.